we are making cutting boards, ingrain cutting boards out of walnut. So this is the face grain, and this is the end grain. This is the orientation the tree grew with the grain going up. So I started with one big board, and then I broke it down into these smaller pieces, and then on the jointer, I flattened the edges where they meet, and these will be glued up into panels. And those panels will then get cross-cut like this to form segments like this one, then those segments get glued up, and that's the cutting board. I'm hoping to get two cutting boards out of each of these panels. It's now the next day, all of this glue should be dried. I want to explain the clamping setup because it probably looks like overkill. Maybe it is overkill. So these clamps are holding these seams tight and I alternated their orientation in case they apply uneven pressure depending on how close you are to the metal bar. And then what these clamps are doing is helping this seam to be flat. I want this to be as flush as possible so that when I plane it, which is the next part of the process, I don't have to remove too much material. So I took these wooden blocks and I put packing tape on them to prevent the glue from sticking to them. And then that's what's holding the seam flush, hopefully. And the next step is to pass these through the planer to smooth and flatten these sides. But I got a bit of a problem, which is that these are not very flat. You can see that there's a little bit of a bow to this. And if I pass it through the planer like that, the planer will smush it flat as it's going and then smooth the top and then it'll pop back into that bow and so I'm not actually accomplishing the goal of flattening these. So I made this quick sled, and then I'm gonna set these pieces on the sled and shim them in the corners to get it to lay flat and to stop wobbling. And then I'll pass it through on the sled for the first side, then once the top is flat, I'll flip it over and pass it through without the sled. All the planing and cross-cutting went well, and this is what I ended up with. So now what I'll do is turn these pieces upright like this, and that exposes the end grain. And I'll take every other piece and flip it around, which offsets the seams and creates this sort of brick-like pattern. Then it will get glued up into a panel and flattened on the planer just like before. But there's a problem. You're not really supposed to plane end grain. The problem is the blade of the planer is spinning like this, and when it gets to this end grain at the end, it'll cause really bad tear out. So I cut these sacrificial pieces from some scrap two by fours, and I'll glue these on the end to support this and prevent the tear out. And this solves the second problem too, which is that planers cause snipe. So what happens is that the front and back of the board get cut a little bit deeper and you get a noticeable shelf. So now that snipe will happen on these sacrificial pieces and it won't affect the walnut at all. I was hoping to get two cutting boards from each panel, a big one and a small one, but I don't have enough material as it turns out. So I will do one big cutting board from each panel and then I'll use the leftovers to make another smaller cutting board. I did that planning a couple days ago and I arrived this morning to kind of a nasty surprise, which is that all these boards have bowed. You can see the gap underneath it. I flipped this one upside down and you can see the rocking from the bowing. It's pretty extreme. I think what happened is that we had a few rainy days and so it was more humid than usual here in the Bay Area. And the top side of these boards that was exposed more to the air absorbed a lot of moisture while the underside didn't. And that caused this top side to swell and it created this bow. So I could plane these flat again, except that if I'm right about the moisture being uneven, then when it dries out, it'll just bow the other direction. 
So I think what I need to do is wait for these boards to equalize and then maybe replane them and finish the process. So what I'm gonna do is turn these all upright like this so that both sides are exposed to the air and hope they flatten back out again. And then I might plane them a little bit more if necessary and then I will cut them down to size and I will cut off these sacrificial end pieces. So I was right about the moisture problem. I exposed both sides of the air for a few days and it flattened right out, so that's great. Now I've got these cut down to size and what I wanna do is add a groove along the side here to give your finger some place to grab it. I'm gonna do that with this round nose router bit. So what I did was make this clamp here so that I could clamp it to the side of the table upright and expose this end. Really what I need is a proper woodworking bench that would have a clamp like this built in, but for now this will get the job done. So I've got these sanded up to 320 grit and they feel silky smooth, but I know from experience that the first time these get wet, that will raise the grain and that will make them feel really fuzzy. So the trick is to raise the grain ahead of time. So I'll get these wet now and then I will let them dry and then I'll sand with 320 grit sandpaper again. And I'll just repeat that process until when I get them wet, they no longer become fuzzy. The finish I'm gonna use is this Howard cutting board oil, which is basically just mineral oil. And I'll do maybe three coats of that, uh, rubbing it in with an old t-shirt. And then I will switch to this butcher block conditioner, which is basically mineral oil and beeswax. I haven't talked about the rationale behind end grain cutting boards. They're supposed to make your knife last longer. The idea is that with face grain, your knife is cutting across the wood fibers and that's doling it. But on end grain, it's going between the fibers. And for the same reason, the cutting board is supposed to be more durable and not scar up as much. And here's the final product. I applied the last few coats at home off camera. It ended up being, I think, four rounds of wet sanding, three coats of the mineral oil finish, and two coats of the beeswax finish. The center cutting board had a bad seam. I think I just didn't plane deep enough on that first round of planing, and so I had a low spot, which then turned into a gap in the seam. So I just cut the cutting board there. It ended up being about two inches shorter than the other one. I'm really happy with the sort of flowing patterns formed by the wood grain. All it took was keeping the strips in order as I cut them and then being consistent with how I flip them around. Anyways, thanks for watching.